What's up everybody? Grim Green back here today. So I was a huge fan of the original Aug Vape V200. I don't know why, I don't know exactly what it was about this. A little bit was the form factor, a little bit was that real clicky button. I just liked the aesthetics of it, I liked the feel of it, I liked the fit and finish of it, I liked getting texted, <laughs> but I was just an overall really huge fan of this. So when I saw that Aug Vape was releasing a sequel to this, the VX200, and it was gonna be a new V200 mod that came with like a pack-in sub-ohm tank, I was pumped, pumped. And then I actually received and opened and started using the Aug Vape VX200 kit and I was initially really bummed just ugh. I was just the most bummed because the v200 went from this really slick sturdy hefty durable clicky responsive high performance mod into a plastic creaky weird disposable tank really super cheap feeling plasticky mod. The thing is, I still really like using this kit and that is really confusing to me. It's honestly not a bad kit. And I might even go so far as to say it, uh, it's good. It's enjoyable, but what I would really like to do right now is just do a real quick uppy closey, show you the mod, show you the screen, show you the tank. Boosh. So this is the VX200 kit that we're gonna be setting up. This is the VX200 kit I've been using. And as you can see, fingerprints. Fingerprints everywhere. There's just no way around it. Your fingerprints are going to be all over this VX200 kit. I would almost, almost call this whole thing disposable. It's got that very sort of uh, unsubstantial, disposable, lightweight feel to it. You know a lot of people out there really dig lightweight mods. It's not my favorite thing because they just feel so cheap and easily, fragilely broken. All right, let's take a look at what you get in the box. Your mod's gonna come in one box, instruction manual. There's your mod right there, micro USB. This is the matte black and you can see right out of the box, oh, Look how shiny and techy this thing feels and looks. It's got that real nice soft anodized aluminum. There's your clicky fire button. There's this just shiny, shiny little piece of tech. So to prevent this one from getting gross and fingerprinty, we're going back in the box. You're, go you're going into a $2 sale, friend. And your jewel disposable sub-ohm tank is going to come in a three pack. This is the clear one. And a three pack of disposable tanks, you're kind of like, whoa, that's kind of cool, right? And it is, that's actually more than you're getting if you bought a sub ohm tank kit. Generally with sub ohm tank kits, you get the mod and a sub ohm tank and then two replaceable coil heads. But with this, you're kind of getting a, a spare, an extra coil head, even though the tanks themselves are disposable. I'm just gonna pop this tank off here because I need to refill it. Interestingly enough, what I thought would be my biggest concern with this disposable tank turns out to not be my biggest concern with the sub ohm tank. And that is priming the coil head. There's no way to take this coil head out of here. And normally when you have coil heads that come out of a sub ohm tank, you're gonna put a little liquid in that coil head just to prime it and get it ready for future vapings. With this, eh, you can kind of do that. What I did is I just put juice directly down into the drip tip. And you can put juice through there until it's coming out of your airflow, but that's not what you wanna do. You wanna kinda of hold it at an angle and drip juice in there and kind of rotate it. All you're trying to accomplish is the coil head needs to be wet, and you can kind of accomplish that through the drip tip. Now, it does have an adjustable AFC, stops at full open, stops at full closed, and then you come to this fill port right here, which aesthetically, that looks like garbage. Just a big white clear silicone stopper on top of your otherwise, I don't know, not unattractive tank. It's called the Jewel. It's got these little diamondy facets cut into it, and it's honestly not the most offensive tank I've ever seen. But you just grab this little piece of silicone right there. You have one, again, singular, large, kidney-shaped juice fill hole. Been viping some strawberries down under. <laughs> that was not a good impression. And then what I like to do is put the nozzle like kind of at the bottom of that kidney shaped juice fill hole and then just kind of hold it at an angle. That's going to let you just bleh, squeeze hard all your juice into here. It's not the cleanest filling tank, but 
it's not difficult, which I appreciate. Once it's all full, you kind of pop this back down in there and you're gonna need to wipe up whatever residual juice there is. I got some on my thumb here. This is the main screen of the device. It's gonna show you everything you need to see. Voltage, wattage, resistance, battery level indicators. This going around the edge is your uh, puff counter. It counts up the seconds that you've been taking a toot. Allow me to demonstrate. So as you can see, that last toot that I took was four seconds long, and those will light up as you as you take a drag on it. I really like this screen. Out of, out of everything involved in this mod, this screen is my absolute favorite part. I just think it looks so crisp and so clean. I love the big numbers. I like the, the subtle color that goes on here. Like I showed you before, this is your very clicky fire button, and it really only clicks at the top. In the middle, it doesn't do anything. It bends a lot. In fact, this whole mod has a lot of like bending and creaking to it. It's mostly plastic. This frame, I believe, is aluminum, but it's really, really lightweight aluminum. Everything is plastic. In fact, these panel doors are kind of transparent. You can see right through them. And they're held on by magnets, and there's a little tab over here for getting your door off. And then if you click the very top of that very clicky fire button three times, one, two, three, it's gonna take you to the menu where you can do everything. This mod has a lot of features built into it. Besides variable wattage, variable voltage, it does have a full temperature control suite, although I'm told that in this temperature control suite, you can't adjust the wattage when you're in temperature control mode, which I don't even use temperature control mode, but if I did, that would be a huge bummer. It does variable wattage mode, it does variable voltage mode. You can go into the settings here and you can change the, you know, uh, the, the screen, the, sh the, the cutoff time, the, the timeout time for the screen, the display color screen. It has all sorts of information in here. Hey, sorry to interrupt in the middle of the video like this, but I just want, why am I so low? I just wanted to point out that the bypass in this mod, when you go to bypass mode, it's series bypass. So you're going to be getting seven volts. So either don't use it or use it with a really high resistance, you know, series build. You should know what you're doing with series if you're gonna use it, because it's it's a lot, just be aware. What I really do like about this interface is it's real clean, it's real slick. You can get through everything you want, and when you hit back, it actually takes you back a subfolder instead of going straight back to the main screen. So yeah, Ogvape VX200. I don't even, it's it's a fantastic piece of, piece of ergonomic plastic. And that's enough yammering on. Let's get back out to normal view. Let's vape the damn thing. Normal view. Normal view. Vaping, vaping damn good. The coil head and these little jewel tanks, even though it's just a single strip of mesh in there, it does stay. Nice and dense, nice and saturated. It's a it's a pretty flavorful vape. And I know a lot of people in the community and in the industry have very mixed feelings about disposable items, especially disposable pods, disposable sub-ohm tanks. When this coil head finally, finally dies in here, you're just gonna throw this whole thing away. Chances are because of the cotton and the wire and the metal in this, it's not gonna be something that gets recycled. This is really just gonna end up in a landfill. This is just generating more plastic garbage on the earth. And look, I'm not like some crazy environmentalist, but I know that more garbage is worse than less garbage. But with that said, despite being disposable and despite having a really ugly and just messy, awkward fill system, it vapes pretty well. The trick is not to drag too hard. When I had this on the first impressions in the vlog, I made a comment about, wow, this is a really noisy tank. And if you take like a, a cloud comp type of drag from it, it's gonna be a really noisy tank. That's just loud as shit. There's no way around it. So when you vape this, you don't have to do that. You can roll, slow your roll a little bit. Just give it a little bit softer of a toot, much less velocity in there. What that's gonna do is it's actually gonna make the airflow feel a little bit smoother because as it stands, the airflow on this Jewel disposable sub-ohm tank is rough. It's rough, it's real rough, it's real sharp, it's real turbulent, but when you slow your roll, when you slow that velocity down, it smooths it out a little bit and takes that volume level way down. And honestly, it's just a more enjoyable vape that way.
and it's quiet and it's tasty. So really I can leave or take the Jewel disposable sub ump tank. It's not something I would ever, ever actively seek out and buy unless I was in a real pinch. Like unless I was traveling somewhere that wasn't a, a, wasn't like a vape meet. Like if I'm going to, I don't know, the East Coast, we're going to visit Casey's family and I have my vape setups with me and then something breaks, something dies, my coil head goes out, I didn't bring any wire or cotton or anything, how am I gonna vape? If I went to a vape shop, I could pick up this kit for 40 bucks and have something to vape. That's kind of how I'm looking at this whole kit. If I'm comparing the mod, the new VX200 mod to the old V200 mod, it, it's worse. I mean, apart from the screen, nothing is better. It feels less durable. It's mostly plastic, really lightweight. There's no heft to it. There's no, you know, it doesn't feel substantial in any way. It doesn't feel like a mod that could last you more than like, I don't know, two, three months, four months, maybe. If you really, really babied it and really, really took care of it, it could last you longer than that. But I kind of view all of this, this whole thing, mod included, as like a disposable setup. Now, a few last things that I do really enjoy about it. It's ergonomic as hell. It just, this shape is so conducive to just, just right in the hand, just perfectly palmable right in the hand super ergonomic, super comfortable. I do like the clicky button, even though it's that bar type of button, I do like how clicky it is at the top. I do also like how responsive this mod is. When you click that button, it's like instant, instant firing, instant power to your coils. I love that it does variable voltage. I love that it does variable wattage. And a lot of people are gonna make a lot of comparisons to that uh, Vaporesso Lux kit with the Skrr tank. If you like the aesthetics of this Ogvape V200X and you like the screen and you like the clicky button and you want a mod that's going to last you more than a few months that doesn't feel so plastic and so disposable, that Vaporesso, that, that Skrr tank kit with the Lux mod, ah, it's better than this and it's going to last you a little bit longer. Okay, I keep going back to negatives. We are focusing on positives here. I do really like the screen. I like the interface. I like the display. I generally, you know, all things considered, considering how plastic and disposable this, I wonder if I could just break this door. Like you can just twist this door. It's completely plastic and it can just, oh, wow. It's okay. It's bending but it's not breaking. I feel like I'm on an infomercial. It bends, but doesn't break. It's cheap, it's it's creaky. There, there, there's play on the door in all directions. It's a disposable, weird, clear tank. It's a bargain thing. This is 100% this is a bargain thing. I'm rambling way too much. This was supposed to be a short video. Let's wrap this up, good lord. Brass tacks, you're gonna need your vape budget hands? Not really. Clicking around the internet, I can find this anywhere from like 30 to 40 bucks which for a whole kit, a mod and three disposable sub home tanks included, uh, that's a screaming deal. And honestly, this would be something for someone if you're just thinking about getting into vaping or maybe away from the jewel and more into a vaping experience where you can control more things and really fine tune your vape. Yeah, this would be a great, great jumping off point. If you're, a, a, you know, a veteran hobbyist vapor and, and you have your stacked mechs with your high resistance RDAs or you're running like a box mod with hexomes and, and an RTA or you got a squonker and a Jenna and higher end stuff and you're a real hobbyist, hobbyist vapor, this is not gonna be a real appealing thing unless unless you need something that's just really gonna be a beater. It's a reliable beater, but it's a it's a it's a plastic beater mod. Someday I would love to see Ogvape release a real V2 of the V200 mod because I liked this thing so much, but in the meantime, we got the VX200 and it's mostly plastic. If we're going to play the Aliens game, like I said earlier, no, probably not unless I was in a pinch. And and look, this has happened to me. I've traveled and my vape gear has broken and I've gone to vape shops to like buy a sub ohm tank, buy new coil heads, buy more liquid. At 40 bucks, this is going to vape and it's going to give you a very pleasant vape. This is too long. Anyway, that's what I got for today, everybody. Links are not allowed in the description, so you're gonna have to use your Google Foo, but thank you so much for watching. And as always, everybody, let's keep on vaping. <laughs>